Hi, I am Uttaran and I will present our work on perceiving emotions from gates using hierarchical attention pooling and affective mapping. This is a work done jointly between the University of Maryland and the University of North Carolina, USA. In this work, we focus on the problem of perceiving human emotions from their walking styles or gates. Gates have been well studied in psychology as a nonverbal modality for emotion perception. These studies have shown that observers were able to perceive the emotions of walking subjects by perceiving features such as arm swinging, stride lengths, collapsed upper body, etc. However, there are a few key challenges in terms of designing machine learning methods for emotion recognition using gates. Fully supervised methods require large-scale annotations which are expensive and tedious to collect. Large-scale label data augmentation is possible with conditional generative methods but current methods can only generate data for short time periods or with relatively low diversity. On the other hand, acquiring poses from videos and motion capture data is cheap and efficient, leading to the availability of large-scale pose-based datasets. Thus, our main objective in this work is to leverage large-scale unlabeled datasets to improve the detection of perceived emotions from human gates. To summarize, our contributions are threefold. One, we develop a semi-supervised network consisting of an autoencoder and a classifier that are trained together to predict discrete perceived emotions from 3D pose sequences of human gates. Two, we design a hierarchical attention pooling module on the autoencoder to learn useful embeddings for unlabeled gates. This improves the mean average position by 1 to 17% compared to state-of-the-art methods in both emotion recognition and action recognition on the emotion gate benchmark dataset. Three, we also subsume the affective features learned from the input gates in the space of latent embeddings in our autoencoder. This improves the mean average position by 7 to 23% compared to the state-of-the-art methods. To elaborate more on the gate-based affective features from studies in psychology, we use 18 features in total. Of this, 11 are angles between two joints on the pose subtended at a third joint. For example, the angle between the head and the shoulders at the neck can be used to compute the head tilt, the angle between the neck and the shoulders can be used to compute slouching, the angle between the root and the thighs can be used to compute stride lengths, and so on. Four are distance ratios between two pairs of joints. For example, the ratio between the distance from the hand to the neck and that from the hand to the root can be used to compute arm swings. And the remaining three are ratios of areas between two triplets of joints. For example, the ratio of the area formed between the elbows and the neck and the area formed between the elbows and the root can be used to compute slouching and arm swings. Area ratios can be viewed as amalgamations of the angle and the distance ratio based features used to supplement observations from these features. We also show via conditional distribution plots that the values of these affective features are different for the different perceived emotion classes, implying that they make good candidates for differentiating between the emotions. We now give a detailed overview of our approach. We first pass the sequence of gate rotations on all the joints through a two-layer gated recurrent unit. Then, we pass the feature representations for all the joint rotations at the output of the GRU through individual linear units. Next, we pull the linear unit outputs for the two arms, the two legs, the torso in five separate linear layers following the kinematic chains of the human body. We use the vector sum operation for pooling. Lastly, we pull the outputs from these five layers into another linear layer, which by construction focuses attention on the rotations of the entire body. The output of this layer is the embedding given by our encoder. The embedding is 32 dimensional. At the time of training, we constrain the first 18 elements of the embedding to conform to the 18 dimensional affective features corresponding to the input gate. The embedding is useful for reconstruction as well as classification. For reconstruction, for reconstruction, the decoder takes in the embedding, repeats it five times for unpooling, and passes the repeated features through five linear layers. The output of these linear layers are features representing the reconstructed motions of the five parts, the torso, the two arms, and the two legs. We repeat each of these features for unpooling, and then collectively feed them into a GRU. This GRU reconstructs the motion on every joint at a single time step. A subsequent GRU takes in the reconstructed joint motions at the single time step and predicts the joint motions for the next t-1 time steps successively. Additionally, if training levels are present, our classifier takes in the embeddings and passes it through a series of three linear layers to generate the predicted levels. For training, we define our total loss as the sum of the pose reconstruction loss of the autoencoder for all the data, the label loss of the classifier for the label data, 
and the regularization losses for the network parameters. We evaluate the performance of our method on the Emotion Gate benchmark dataset. This dataset consists of 3924 gates in total, of which 1835 are labeled with four emotions happy, sad, angry, and neutral, and the remaining 2089 are unlabeled. We compare with state-of-the-art methods in both perceived emotion detection and action recognition and observe an improvement of 7-23% to on the mean average precision. In particular, our method improves the average positions for the angry and the neutral classes by 10-50% to on the absolute. This is particularly significant as each of these classes constitute less than 25% of the label samples and therefore highlights the benefit of using unlabeled data for training our network. We also perform ablation studies to show the benefit of our two contributed components, hierarchical attention pooling on the joints, denoted as HP here, and using affective loss constraint on a subset of the latent embeddings learned by the encoder, denoted as AL here. As we can observe, adding these components improves the average precision from a baseline version of our network without these components. In particular, we observe that adding only the AL provides more benefits than adding only the HP. This is reasonable since hierarchical pooling helps the network learn generic differences in the post sequences of different data, while the affective loss constraint helps the network to distinguish between post structures specific to different perceived emotions. We highlight the benefit of using unlabeled data more clearly in this plot. As we can observe, the average precision of all the classes increases linearly as we keep adding more unlabeled data into the training process. The trend does not indicate a saturation, implying that the performance can potentially improve further if we had yet more unlabeled data. We now show a few qualitative results. We can observe that our method matches the annotated emotions more consistently than the other methods. This is primarily because we force our encoder to learn representations from the kinematic chains in the human body and constrain the embedding space of our encoder to subsume the affective features computed from the gates, which contain rich information for perceiving emotions from gates. We also show a few scenarios where the emotion classes predicted by our method partially matches the annotated classes. This occurs due to the similarity in the affective features in some of the class instances. For example, in this case, the slow pace of the gate makes the network think that the gate is only sad, while in this case, the exaggerated limb movements confuse the network into thinking that the gate could be either happy or angry. To summarize, we have developed a semi-supervised approach to perceive discrete emotions from people's gates with a mean average precision of 0.84, outperforming current state of the art by 7 to 23%. We have also highlighted the benefit of using unlabeled data to improve the average precision on classes that have very few labeled samples. Our current work also has some limitations. For example, we only consider discrete emotion labels and not the broader continuous space of emotions commonly used in psychology. We therefore plan to extend our work into a regression problem in the continuous space. We also only consider affective features extracted from gates of one person at a time. In the future, we plan to explore emotions of groups of people. We also plan to extend into other affective components such as behaviors and personalities that can affect emotions. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening.